Welcome to another edition of the Sim Racing Garage. I'm Barry Rowland, and in this episode, we'll be reviewing the GT Track cockpit from the guys at Next Level Racing. This is their flagship cockpit that is also designed to accommodate their very nice V3 motion platform and the upcoming Traction Plus motion platform. Now this video is called The Build, and it will be part one of a two-part review series. Part two of the series will be called The Setup, so sh be sure and check that one out also. Now, let's put this cockpit through the SRG review process. So let's get to it. So before we get to the actual assembly of this cockpit, I wanted to go over a couple of quick things with what comes with it as far as the accessories and of course the hardware and things like that. First off, we get this very nice blister kit or blister package kit of all the hardware that we'll be using. Well, almost all the hardware. And it's a very nice kit that they've actually done here. And again, I'll probably be making comments on this as we go through this cockpit build. Uh, typically from Next Level Racing, we have a, a top tier presentation from these guys as far as everything they do. And that you, that you would normally see in the top tier or upper tier commercial uh, producers of equipment in general, not just sim equipment. But anyway, this is a nice little blister pack we have here. We've got most of the bolts and nuts we're going to be using here are M8s, and we've got, and it's all labeled. Let's see the labels here, get the light reflections out. We have some 60 mil M8s. We've got a 10 mil wrench over here. We've got some Allen wrenches that I won't be using because I have my own. And up here we have these really long 110 millimeter 8 mil bolts, and these are for the pedal tray uh, reinforcement if you need it. I probably will be using it because I always need pedal tray reinforcement, I think. Anyway, so we'll get to that once we get to that segment. We have a 13 mil wrench over here. Basically, the tools that you'll need to assemble this rig are included in this blister pack. We also have some Velcro strips. Looks like we have about eight of them or so of them. And this obviously is going to be for cable management. And over here, we have some more M8s. These are 15 mil. Then we got some more M8s over here. Oops, so there's the nuts actually for the M8s over here. But these are 15 mil M8s over here. And here we have the M5s that are going to be, we'll use these for attaching shifters and things to the actual cockpit. And we have some nuts for the M5s over here. It seems that they've kind of broken away from their blister pack a little bit. But I think if you wiggle them around here, they're all in there. Already counted them. And of course we have some washers up here for M8s and washers down here for the M5s. And these little, little washers here, they call them spiked washers, which is kind of a, a lock washer, if you will, because you, as you compress the bolt down against this, it kind of digs into the, the face of the bolt and also the surface that you're applying it to. So it kind of keeps things from moving around. Anyway, so yeah, there it is in a nice blister pack. Again, I like the way that Next Level Racing does this. Now, they've also got two different ways for us to set this on the floor. We've got these feet, and these are just regular screw-in units. Actually, I guess I'll go ahead and show you one here. Because I won't be using these. I think I'm going to use the, the rollers just to see what they, what they do. And what, I might go back to these. But yeah, just some plastic here. Uh, it's not really flexible. It's pretty hard. And just a threaded bar there that's going to go up into the frame. And we'll see how that works once we get there. But I'm probably, like I said, I'm not going to use these at first. I'm going to use these, which are the wheels. And again... Everything, by the way, impeccably packed. That's one thing that I noted when I, I got this rig. And I'll show you a picture here of all the parts when I first opened the box. Every single part has its own bubble wrap, including these wheel packages, apparently. And we have, these are just the typical, you know, office chair type rollers. And again, we have a nut on them that's going to, and we'll get a closer look at these as we're putting them on. And they're actually lockable. That's one of the reasons why I think I'm going to go ahead and use these first, see how they do, and maybe have to go back to the other feet once we have some motion applied. Right. What else we got? Some extra kit here that has some bolts in it. And this is for if you have the V3 motion platform, which I have. And these bolts are so that we can actually bolt that platform to the frame. And again, we'll see that as we get to that portion of this review. And it's nice that they actually just threw these in, but I think they throw these in with every kit. So later on, if you want to upgrade to the V3 motion, then you have this little kit of bolts here to bolt it to it. Very cool. Thinking ahead. And we've got some stickers here that actually go onto the frame. And again, just it's, again, the details here, all these stickers come 
not just to, like you usually usually rather get a sticker in a box, you know, and you, you just stick it on, peel off the back, which you do with these, of course. But these actually have a coating on them that you pull off to keep them from getting scratched. So they maintain that beautiful, glossy surface on them when you put them on. So once we get to that point, we'll be putting these on. But again, it's the details that really kind of make things or make products rise above some of the other products that we see. Right, so that's it. Let's go ahead and get to putting this GT Track cockpit together. Okay, so we're going to start with the main front part of this cockpit. And this really, there's no assembly to this. It's all one piece. But we will take a quick closer look at it just to see how it's built. And everything is welded together on this cockpit as far as the parts that are pre-assembled. And they're using different types, or not different types, but different thicknesses of metal throughout this build. And I'm going to look at this. Let me get my calipers over here. Hope that doesn't fall over. And see what we're looking at here. Now, this, these sections here, are these pockets, if you will, are going to be where we're attaching other pieces to the cockpit. And we have them in the front here. We also have them in the back. And we'll look at those in a second. But usually these type of points, attachment points, will be made of thicker metal, have a little bit more reinforcement in them. And these are three mil thick, right? And the plate right in front of it, if I mic that one out, it's actually 2.5 mil. Yeah, so this is 2.5 mil. So it looks like we have 2.5 mil on the other sections, and we have three at the reinforced sections where we're actually going to be attaching some of the hardware. And check this one back here, because I like to check them around, uh, yeah, 2.5, same thing, just to make sure that they're doing the same thing. Now, I really can't check these because they're actually welded in already to the frame. Now, speaking of the welding, the welding looks actually very good here. Looks like a, a nice production type of welding job on this. They've ground it down where it needs to be ground down. So this is the flat part right here, and you can see the weld there, right in here. And they've actually ground this down flat, so you want it to be flat, obviously, because this needs to be a flat surface when we mount it to whatever it's going to be sitting on. And the same thing down here. And while we're in here, see if I can give you a look at the welds there. You can see they've got some welds going on. Let me change my grip here before I, something falls down. All right, so this is what I want you to see, these little welds in here, right? And we have another one sitting up here. Now, this one doesn't, hasn't been ground down because, obviously, it doesn't interfere with anything. Right, so that's typical of the welding that's all the way around this unit. And also, I might as well go show you this, these threaded inserts. These are threaded inserts that are pressed into the metal. And that's a, a common industry way of putting threaded inserts instead of just drilling it in. Because now we have, you see that's a deep insert in there as far as the threads go. And we flip it around, you can see how deep it is. All right, see how far it sticks up? And they're using a rivet style of application here. I don't know how well this is going to show up. But there's actually some flaring around the bottom of this piece of the threaded insert. And that's from another tool, tooling, or piece of tool or tooling being applied to the other side, and this side, and this side. And it's squeezed down. Once it's put in, it's actually squeezed down and flared out. Very common to, well, a rivet, the way they apply rivets. So again, I'm not sure how well that's showing up. I'll try to give you some different angles. Show you the light there. Maybe that looks like a good angle there. So yeah, and that's not going to come off. I mean, you have to have a lot of pressure pulling on those, I imagine, to actually rip it out, even though I'm sure if you put enough on there, we could do it. <laughs> so yeah, not much else to see here. Um, we got lots of holes on the side rails here. Obviously, this is going to be for mounting other things, too. This is the front part, so the pedal tray is actually going to be in the interior of this. And we'll see that when we get to the pedal tray mounting section and it will be able to adjust that pedal tray with all these holes up and down and in and out rather to our relationship to us when we're sitting in the actual seat. So, yeah, so this is the easy part, right? So let's go ahead and get to the next thing we'll do is the uprights that are going to support our wheel deck. So we'll get to those next. All right, so now we're ready to start putting these wheel deck support assemblies on. At least that's what I'm calling them. 
Uh, next level racing really doesn't call them anything in the instruction manual, so that's what I'm calling because that's what um, these are. The wheel deck support adjustable arms go in the top here, and of course one of these legs goes in each section of the front cockpit assembly that we just saw. Right, so these are the same affair here as far as the tubing. This is 2.5 mil right here, and just like we had 2.5 on the actually the front chassis assembly. And these are welded in a similar way. I'll show you the welds here. Right there. And we have one on each side, of course. Now the coating on this stuff is, is kind of like, it's not, not really, I think it's paint. Some kind of a crinkle paint maybe. It's not, it doesn't feel like powder coat because it's not smooth enough unless it's a, a grainy type of powder coating. But yeah, this stuff is gonna scratch just like I think any finish you can put on any metal, aluminum, steel, regardless. So kind of be gentle as you're putting this together and it won't develop scratches on you. But there are some things that are gonna move in and out of these tubes like the wheel deck adjustment that's going in here. Chances are that might get some scratches on it as you adjust the wheel deck if you have to adjust it a lot. Right, we've got two holes here and they're going to the corresponding holes that are going to be in that chassis we just saw and two up front. So we're going to need some bolts, obviously. And these are the 60 mil bolts, and I'll show you what we're going to be using here. This is a 6 mil hex head uh, cap socket head screw, as they call them, or bolt. And again, they have a nice black finish on them. We have a nut that has kind of an integrated locking ring in it. Give you a little close look here. You can see the teeth on it there. I like these, it's so you don't have to add a washer on this, right? But we are going to put a washer on this side, like this. So we got a washer where the cap head is, and then we're going to put the nut, obviously, on the other side. But it's not the need of a washer because it's kind of an integrated washer already. Nice looking black hardware. One thing I will mention here, I've already cleaned these off. Is let me get my paper towels. I got a few paper towels over here because when these things ship, all the hardware that's in that blister pack that we saw has a fine sheen of lightweight oil on it. So you're going to want to, at least I do it this way. Not everybody wants to do this, but it helps with when you're assembling your rig. If you want to just wipe that off with a paper towel real quick, that way you don't get it all over your fingers while you're assembling your rig, and then you got grease all over your rig you have to clean off. And it just takes a quick wipe. You can see it came right off. Now, it's not only on the washers, it's on <laughs> the nuts and all the hardware, as it should be. And the reason they do this kind of thing is to keep it from rusting in route. Let's say this is sitting in a warehouse somewhere, and it happens to be humid in that, that warehouse, then of course that can cause the hardware to rust up on you keeps that from happening but yeah you do have to clean this off the bolts in fact i need an extra bolt i got four of them sitting over, three of them sitting over here i need another one same thing with the bolts you can see that sheen on there i think all right and you'll see it as you just take i usually grab it like that twist it once or twice and that'll do it and you can see what came off it's kind of too bright white there because of the lights but yeah you see the dirt there and it's not really dirt it's just the grease and the you know, normal manufacturing stuff. And yeah, that's all you got to do. So we've got four of these ready to go. And what we'll do is go ahead over to the chassis we already have sitting over here in the middle of the SRG and go ahead and get close-ups of how we mount this. Okay, now we can go ahead and put this little A-frame assembly in here. And it just drops right into this front chassis assembly. And We've already got our bolts ready to go, and they just slide into the holes pretty easily, I imagine. There we go. And they're sliding all the way through, and there's holes on the other side over here, too, that I'm able to reach because this section here is hollowed out. So I'll be able to reach it, as you can see, I just bumped that bolt back out of there. I'll be able to reach it to get these nuts on them. And there's the top hole. You might have to shake it around a little, jiggle it around a little bit to get it to find the other hole, like that. And there we go. So they're both all the way through the holes. We're going to take our nuts. And I'm just going to... Let's see how well these go on. I might have to use my wrench. I might not, depending how stiff these nuts go on. Sometimes they'll just spin right on. And sometimes they're a little bit stiff. So yeah, that's going right on. So no problem there. You 
see I'm just threading it in and finger tight. Doesn't need to be real tight. And we can go back here and get the rear ones like that. And this, these are actually see where the nuts are because this piece over here, you can't really see it from the shot, but anyway, you can actually get your fingers. They don't have to go underneath to grab, to actually grab the nut to get it on. You do have to go underneath on this side. Very simple stuff. This couldn't be easier as far as assembly, I think. There we have it. All right. And of course, this is still loose and it's going to stay loose like that until we get everything assembled and then we'll come back and give everything a proper tightening. So what we'll do next is get the other A-frame assembly installed on this side and when we come back we'll be talking about the next piece that we want to install here. So now we have the next section that we're going to put on this frame. All right, and This is really what I call the rear chassis assembly maybe. <laughs> because that's what it is it's it's again it's the, the eighth inch not the eighth inch sorry that's actually the 2.5 mil metal square tubing we have here and again everything has been welded together you can see little spot welds here all right i think you can see those okay and we've got them inside the joints here too right there mm -hmm. okay and you can see we have a lot of holes on here because this is going to hold our shifter and let's see, the shifter I think goes up in this orientation. Now there is a big hole here cut in the top. And you see another hole right there. So you can put your finger through there. What that is, is when this butts up, and you'll see that once I put this on, when we get a close up of it, this butts up to the front part of the chassis in that thicker mounting section on it, that there's actually another threaded insert that we're gonna put another bolt through. It'll stick through like that. And that just makes it two bolts, one here, one here, and then an extra bolt holding bolt up here. So I'll have three bolts on each side holding its assembly in. And this little hole here is going to get covered up by this piece of plastic. It just kind of fits in there. You tap it in with your hand or whatever, and then that covers it up, the access. In fact, you see it kind of slides in there pretty good already. All right. Now, as you notice, there's something next to me over here, <laughs> and this is the V3 Next Level Motion, rather Next Level Racing's Motion Platform V3, and we're going to obviously be mounting that to this chassis. I, no sense in if you have one of these laying around, not to put it in to the actual Next Level chassis. So this actually will bolt to this, and the reason I have this out here, up here now, is because. In the instructions it says to just go ahead and bolt these to the front chassis assembly and then set this down in there and I guess lift up on it and you know block it up somehow to where you can get everything lined up. I'm going to try something a little differently or I'm going to try something a little different. Do it differently. First off the holes that we're going to use start off back here. So this back hole is the first hole and if I hold this up here, well this is going to show up here but you can see that I have a hole here that lines up with this hole and then this hole goes with that hole, and then this little round hole here goes with that one. So it's going to sit like this, because we're upside down here, it's going to sit like this. And you can see how much we're going to have sticking up for the seat assembly here, where the, all the movement is, is uh, achieved. And we're still going to have plenty of room underneath here, because you want some clearance. You don't want this sitting on the floor, obviously, because we've got these... Tilt this up here. Ah, it's heavy. These two fans here are sucking air in and blowing it through this, the system here to keep these motors cool. And yeah, you don't want to block that up. You want to have plenty of room under there for them to actually suck that air through. So what we'll do next is, and we've got six of the bolts. I wanted to mention this. These are came out of the extra pack of bolts that I showed you before that we're actually going to use to bolt this up. And really, they're just another M8 60 millimeter bolt here. And we got some washers, obviously, that we're going to want to put on these before we bolt them up. And they're long like that because they have to reach through this tube here, like this, and have enough left over to still have a good amount of thread going into the side mount points on this motion platform. Because we want to make sure that we secure this properly because there's going to be a lot of torque on this seat part of it as it's moving against the frame. So we want to make sure that we've got plenty of thread in there it's inside of here in these mounting points so that everything is nice and stiff, right? So what we'll do next is go over to where we've been working on the chassis 
and see how this is going to work out as far as putting these on and then kind of flipping it around and shoving it up there. So we'll see how that works out when we get back. Now, if you've been following along, you can see that I've actually changed my mind about how I want to do this as far as mounting this Next Level Racing V3 motion platform into the chassis. And what I did was, if you look back here, I've actually got some wood blocks. And this is blocking this up. These are two by fours, actually a little bit thinner than that. But anyway, it blocks this up high enough to where I can just kind of gently pick up on it to get the bolt started, I believe. And that way, everything's already in position here. There's not going to be any moving around of anything as far as to get everything else bolted up. So without further ado, we should be able to get these started in a hand tightening sequence. And I want to pull this back a little because I can actually look down right down in between these two surfaces and see where my bolt is going. And once I get it through the tube, then I can really see that I'm about, um, I'd say three eighths of an inch low as far as this bracket is, which makes sense because these blocks aren't perfect. And all I have to do is kind of get up here and pick up on this to where I can get that started. And I just gotta take pressure off of it and I should be able to get its finger started here. And there it goes. I'm actually just doing that with my fingers, so it, you can tell it's going in pretty well. Now what I'll do next is I have another hole here, and I'll lift up on the front part. Now that we have this part kind of holding some weight, we can just pick up on the front part here, kind of just rock it up, if you will. And I should, if everything goes right, just get that started without too much trouble at all. You might want to shake it a little bit as I'm doing it, and I'll find that sweet spot where it goes ahead and screws in. All we have is one more to do, and that's going to be this further front one here. It's all the way to the front. And we'll see how that goes. Yeah, I'm just kind of shaking a little bit to get it to go. Yeah, so now I'm just going to finger tighten them, kind of take the chassis, take the weight off them. Again, I'm always taking the weight off to get things to move. And then I could just hand tighten these up. Again, I'm not going to, actually I just might. I might go ahead and torque these down already. In fact, I think I'll do that now. And the reason being because I'm gonna be rocking this whole chassis up to get the wheels underneath it once I get to a certain point, probably right after I do this. And yeah, then, yeah, I, I want this tight when I do that. So, easy enough. We'll just tighten them up. All right, so now that we're on this side and I'm actually gonna push this up, you can see the front chassis section moved a little bit when I did that. And what we're gonna do is go ahead and attach this front part, move over here. Actually, stay out of the way of my cameras here. And I'm gonna pick this up a little to make sure, remember, on the top part here, there is a hole that we're going to want to put a bolt in right here that bolts into this what I'm calling the A-frame assembly, okay? And that's this little bolt here. And this is a 15 millimeter M8 bolt. We saw that on the earlier portion of our video of which bolts go where or which bolts that we have available to us. And again, I'm just fingering tightening these things and then we'll go ahead and do just like we did in the segment where we attach the A-frame here to this mounting point on the front chassis frame. So all we need to do is slide those in, hopefully, if everything's lining up like it should. That's why I wanted to get this top one in first to make sure it looked right before I started getting these in. And yep, that's going in good. And that's going in good too. So now we'll just go ahead and spin our nuts on the other side. Of course, I have my nuts ready to go. And get that one going. And again, finger tight. Don't want to get everything real tight yet. And there we have it. So we've got this part attached. Now all we have to do, obviously, is go to the other side here and put all the bolts in and get it attached. And when we come back, we'll be moving on to the next segment, which I'm not sure what's going to be yet, but <laughs> we'll have this sitting flat. In fact, it might be add, uh, putting the wheels on because I think at this point, before it gets too heavy, I want to be able to still pick this up to where I can get the wheels underneath it. But we'll see the, uh, how that works once we get back. 
I decided to go ahead and install the wheels on the bottom of the chassis. So we'll go ahead and pull those out again. Again, bubble wrap on every single part just about that you pull out of this kit. And here's the wheels. And they actually give you 10 of these wheels. So we'll take a closer look at it here. And again, typically you'll find these on like office chairs. And this is a free spinning nut with a threaded rod attached to it. This is the brake in the back. I believe the brake is down now. Yeah, you can't move it. So we flip this all the way up and it spins freely. It looks like it's a pretty solid block in here. I've seen these office wheels that were really cheaply made and these seem to be pretty tight. So we're going to have four of these down each side of the chassis, a total of eight of them. So I don't think there's going to be any problem with supporting the chassis. The reason I'm using these wheels is number one, I want to be able to push it around and I might go back to the feet if it doesn't survive my test. <laughs> I've got this motion, the uh, V3 motion module on here and when we're actually kicking the seat around, I want to see if this actually moves with the brake down, of course. I mean, once these lock in, yeah, they shouldn't move. But anyway, we're going to go ahead. There's a couple of parts that come with this. Well, not really a part. We've got a 14 millimeter wrench that comes in this box. Looks like that. Okay. And you see how thin that is? And the reason I'm using this, a tool that actually came out with the kit, I'm not going to actually use it, <laughs> is because I don't have a 14 mil that's that thin. But guess what? Now I do because it's going in the toolbox. But we use that because once we have this screwed into the bottom of the chassis, we're going to use this to do the final leveling. And it has to be very thin to get between this nut and the bottom of the chassis, but also one of these. These are also included in the kit. And these don't have a bunch of oil on them, so I don't have to wipe them off. <laughs> Bonus. <laughs> All right. So this is a, like a washer that's going to go on top of this, like so. All right. So then we'll still have room because of this nice thin wrench to get in there and turn it. And then we can set the level on the wheels that we want in case the chassis is not sitting completely level. So yeah, I'm, I'm liking what I'm seeing here as far as the, the kind of heavy duty plastic it looks like that this whole section here is made of. So again, we're going to have four of these or eight on the whole entire chassis. So I don't think there'll be any problem with load bearing issues but there's only one way to find out, and that's to put it on, run it, and see what happens. So next, we'll just go over to the rig and put the wheels on. So now we're ready to go ahead and get the wheels installed before, like I said before, this rig gets too heavy. And what I'm gonna do is just kind of pick it up and put it on its side. And I got enough cardboard over there to catch the other side. So let's go ahead and do that. There we go. Just gently lay it on its side. All right, looks pretty good. Now, we've got four holes on the bottom of this frame. Got one here, got one here, one right next to it right there. And then we have one way down here, right? So we're going to take the wheel that we've already seen and we're gonna make sure we've got our flat washer on top of that and the super thin 14 mil to attach it with. I'm gonna start with this one here just because it's kind of in the middle and I have a close up view over here on another camera so we'll actually see me putting it on from that angle. All right so what I'm going to do is to keep this flat washer here from falling off on me I'm just going to kind of just lean it up tilt it in like that. Now I'm going to try to get my finger in here to get it started and I don't know okay I'm because it's really that much room in there at all you know, it looks like yeah I'm going to have to use the wrench even just to get it started. There's not enough room. Unless you have a... Let me try my pinky. I'll try anything as long as I don't have to <laughs> use the wrench all the way in. But it looks like it's not going to cooperate. I don't know. Let's see. Yeah, I think I may have started it there. There we go. All right. So pinky worked a little ways. But it only works so far where we're going to have to get the wrench out. And if you're very careful, you can kind of spin it all the way around kind of handing it off to each hand so you're not taking it on, putting it back off, putting it on, taking it back off. That takes forever, man. All right. So yeah, that's working pretty good. Now when we start to get to the tightening point, you want to make sure that you get this washer. The square washer is flush with the sides here because you don't want it sticking out 
from the side like this. See how it's sticking up a little bit there? Just make sure it's flat and nice and perfectly aligned. Must be perfect. <laughs> Just kidding. It doesn't have to be perfect. Just gonna, I like to keep everything nice and straight. There we go. So I'm just going to snug that up a little bit for now. I might end up taking it back loose a little bit if I need some more distance as far as getting everything level. And there we have it. That spins pretty good. Like I said, when I had this in hand to begin with, it felt pretty substantial. So I think this is going to be a good wheel for this setup. And of course, it's free right now spinning. The wheels spin pretty good. And if we put the brake on, obviously, once they reach their brake notch, yeah, they're not spinning anymore. Right, so there we have it. And all we have to do now is put the other three on here. And I believe I have enough room to go ahead and put the other four on without having to put it back down and then flip it back up the other way. Although it'll probably be easier because I'm not having to bend over and get on my hands and knees and look at it kind of crazy sideways. But anyway, when we come back, we'll have all these wheels on. And well, when we come back, really what we'll do is be moving on to the next part that we're gonna be putting on this next level racing gt track cockpit so we'll get to that next all right the next part that we're going to be putting on here is this piece and it's a pretty heavy piece actually and it's been welded together and this actually goes like this like this if you're looking behind the rig or the cockpit and it actually joins the rear ends of those two side assemblies that we saw to get before that I actually mounted the V3 motion platform to. This kind of ties everything together into a nice solid box. And that's what this panel is for. Now, if you look at it, again, we've got the riveted in threaded inserts. And we've got the welds that we've been seeing so far. Everything's welded together. You see a weld there. We got one on the back here. Again, nicely finished. The welds look good. We've even got some, I don't know if they got any inside welds. That doesn't look like, it looks like they, it was bent and then they went ahead and welded it. So it was like it was kind of bent together. Now you notice there's actually two holes here on the bottom of this panel. And when we have it mounted like this, the holes obviously are gonna be on the bottom. Well, what are those holes for? Well, it turns out they're for what they call their traction plus system. And this is the holes you would use to mount to it. I do have a picture of it. They don't have a picture of it on their website, but I have a picture because they actually put it in their instructions. <laughs> I'm not sure why they do that. But anyway, I'm not sure how clear you guys are going to be able to see this. Let me get my pointer here. But, and there's actually, if you go to the Next Level Racing's YouTube page or site, or channel rather, then, and look for all through their videos, you'll actually see a traction loss one. I think they did it three months ago with a, a, a real race car driver. Anyway, I'm not sure how clear this is going to be for you guys, but if you look here and here, these guys are the pods that we mount the chassis to. So this is a big piece right here. If you think, see how big that chassis is as far as lengthwise. So it's going to add some space requirements for your chassis if you want to run something like this. But we have this pod here and this one over here. And they move independently of each other in a lateral direction. So traction loss, but they call it traction plus because both the front and the rear move. So yeah, this is something I'm very, very interested in trying. And when they finally come out with it, I'm definitely going to see what I can do and do, do my best anyway to try to get a hold of one and do some testing with it. But if you look right here closely, well, let's go over this one. I guess I, you can see there's two, two screws to, in a pair there and there's two in the middle and there's two in the farther end. I, like I said, I'm not sure how well that's gonna show up for you guys, but I'm pretty sure that that's what these holes are for. So we can just take the whole chassis, settle on top of this thing once that's assembled. I'm sure it comes in a couple of parts. And then just bolt it in with eight bolts and you're off to the races. Because once this is on there, we'll still be able to reach in underneath our chassis here and put our bolts in, right? So anyway, <laughs> I just want to show you guys that because uh, it's something that's coming out, that they're going to be coming out with and it looks really, really promising as far as a, a complete simulator experience, I think. And we've already got four bolts for this. Again, we're going to bolt directly into these threaded inserts, so we don't need any nuts for this. But we still be, will be using some washers. So what we'll do is go over to the chassis, just like normal, and put this on. All right, so we've got our piece in here. Now, it's easier to visualize now what this piece is doing. It's going to bolt on the back end of both sides of these chassis pieces, and it's going to tie it all together. 
So that'll give us a nice box, complete box, once we get everything tightened up on here. And that's going to add, obviously, to the rigidity or just how stiff this chassis is. Now, this goes in, remember, the holes on the bottom there. There we go. They want to be pointing down like this, so when we get our Traction Plus system, we can just bolt it right in, right? <laughs> all right. So all I'm going to do is, i got a close-up of this, and just kind of go in straight with it and put our bolt through the hole. And you can see the bolt come through the other side and just kind of line up the first one here and see if we can get her started. And that one went in easy enough. And then we'll go ahead and do the same thing for this side. There we go. That'll do. And then what we'll do, obviously, is come over to this side, or the opposite side, the one you guys can't see right this moment, and do the exact same thing that we did over there. And there we go. The bottom one's a little bit harder to line up because you've always started the front one. But anyway, so there you go. And I'm just going to run these in a little bit but not get a full tighten on it quite yet. So bear with the noise here. All right, so there we have it. She's on. And then, like I said, once we get this thing really, all these nuts and bolts tightened down to the final torque, this is going to be one solid chassis. And by the way, it rolls pretty good. You can see right here. <laughs> I really like the, how easy this thing rolls. So what we'll do next is, yeah, we're going to get to the pedal tray next because that's the next complicated piece we're putting on here. And then that's about it except for mounting the seat. So pedal tray is next. Now we'll look at the pedal tray assembly. First, we'll look at the piece that actually mounts to the chassis. And it mounts, uses the side flange here on either side. We have a M8 bolt going through there and an M8 bolt going through here, depending on what angle we want. We have the threaded inserts. A little closer look here. That is the standard theme for the way they manufacture this cockpit. And it looks to me that this has been put on a brake, a metal brake, and bent. The edges have been bent in. But you can see there's actually some reinforcing welds there on the corners here, on both of these corners. There they are. Now, also, I want to talk just briefly about this slot. These have holes in them that are next to each other instead of just an adjustment slot. Now, I've always thought, and this is actually the first time I've had this in my hands, something that actually has took the time to drill the holes instead of just cut the slot in. And what this does is it makes it so whichever one of these holes that I pick, it's not going to move up or down. And if you have just a slot in here, if you put enough pressure on it, no matter what kind of bolt you have in there, you could make it move. You really can. And that's always been a pet peeve of mine. If you just drill a bunch of holes together, then that would take care of it. But this is the first time I've actually seen it done. So hats off to Next Level Racing uh, addressing one of my pet peeves with adjustable slots. Now, there is a compromise here, like with everything. There's, nothing, there's no free lunch, as they say. And that is that there will be a little bit of less adjustment in this as far as micro adjustment. And depending on the application, that will matter or it won't matter. And in this application for a pedal tray, for a pedal tray mount, yeah, you're not going to worry about the micro adjustment you're losing. In fact, the centers on these holes, I actually measured them. They're actually 7 mil. Got my little thing out there. There you go, 692. Well, 7 mil, we'll round it off. Close enough. And so we have 7 mils of adjustment on the angle here as we go down. But I guarantee you that it's not going to affect you finding a comfortable angle for whatever brake pedal set that you're running. I mean, I just can't believe that's possible. But I'm, I'm sure, you know, there's somebody out there that's going to say, oh, yeah, I had it, and, and I couldn't get it just right. And <laughs> so all I'm saying is there's adjustments in the pedal levers themselves on most pedal sets, or the higher end ones anyway, that allows you to dial that in, and you can micro adjust at that point. But, yeah, this is cool because once you set it, you can pound on this thing with your feet, and, yeah, it's not going to move, I don't think, unless you can snap one of those, those little pieces right there in between the holes. But, yeah, that's pretty thick. This is, let's see what kind of, I believe this is the 6 mil, 5 mil. No, oh, I don't know what I was thinking, 5 mil, geez. This is 3 mil, so it's the thick metal that they're also using in the braces that we saw on the chassis behind me here. 
uh, is where the attachment points on for all the chassis parts. Right. Now, once we have this installed, we got this heavy plate, and this is a heavy boy, which is good. Heavy's good. And I believe it's the same thing, three mil. Yeah. All right, so this is another three mil piece, and you can see we have slots in here for mounting. I believe these are pre hold uh, or rather pre-drilled for the slots here that you can put a Thrustmaster, a Logitech, or a Fanatic, or Fanatech, some people call it. So whatever. But yeah, this is space for that. I'm not going to be able to use that because I want to run my HPP pedal set on this. I was going to run the Wave Italy's, but I thought I'd get the HPP's out and give them a workout. They've been sitting there lonely for a while. So what I'm going to have to do, and I'll show you when I do this, when I do the installation, is I'm going to put a couple of strips of profile. This is where this, this aluminum profile just shines. You can just about do anything with it. I'm going to put a couple of pieces across here and then a couple of pieces across that to actually affix the pedal sets to, the pedal themselves to, in my heel plate, and that's going to work out just splendidly. Right, so now all we have to do is go over and put our bolts in. And again, this is the same thing we're going to be putting in, because we're going through the tubes, obviously, to mount this, we're going to be using the 60 mil bolts, and we are going to need some nuts. I can say that, nuts. We're <laughs> going to need the washers, and but when we actually bolt this to this, all we're going to need is the bolts to go in. And it's not going to be very long as I think we're using the 15 mil, 8 mil bolts. But we'll see that when you see me putting it on the chassis. So that'll be next. Right. Now we can get this thing bolted up. What I'm going to do is, of course, this piece fits in the middle here, like so. And I'm going to actually put an angle on this. I'm going to put this up to the, let me show you right here, this third hole from the bottom. See that? Third hole. That's what I'm going to use as far as my tilt because I want to show you the front uh, support that these longer bolts offer if you need it. I'm not going to need it because I'm going to run it flat. So what I'm going to do is count. I'm going to go to this third hole back here is where the front of this pivot's going to be. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Take one of the 60 mil bolts, get it started in that third hole, and kind of you got to kind of look on the other side at the same time so we get the right angle adjustment hole that we want. And that's the third one. There it is. You kind of hang that right there. And I'm going to come over here on the other side and do the same thing. Get to the third hole and the third hole. Easy to remember that way. All right. So now we have it. I kinda, you can just let it swivel to the side there. And we'll go ahead and take our nut and put it on there. Take a nut from over here. Now, one thing to be mindful of over here when we're putting the bolt through this hole, this flange back here, see how it's cut there? Well, if you have the bolt sticking all the way through, let's say I put it in, let's see, and of course I'm going to put it in the third hole from that bolt because that's where the spacing is on this. When I have it all the way in, I don't have enough room to get this nut on it because this flange is, is getting in the way. So what you do is just push it in a little way and then you can get your nut up next to it and spin it on and then bring it in as you're spinning the nut on. Just something that you might run into if you're putting this rig together and you're going, crap, this thing doesn't even, the nut won't even go on because it's in the way. So I'm just putting it a little way. See, I got a lot of the bolts sticking out there. I'll take the nut and just put that puppy up there like that. And yeah, just kind of run it together. And the bolt is low enough, the head of the bolt behind here is low enough to miss that flange. So we'll do the same thing on this side. And get it through the hole. Just push it in a little ways and get our nut started. And then go ahead and push it the rest of the way in. Awesome. See how great that works? So now we have the angle we want, and of course I'm probably going to be, like I said, running this flat, but anyway, let's go ahead and put the tray on, and that's going to fit in pretty easily. Again, the slots here, obviously, we want those lined up with the holes, and I'll go ahead and start one. I usually start the top ones, because it's at an angle here, keep it from sliding backwards if possible. Easy enough to start this stuff, grab the other one on this side. 
I really like these threaded inserts. I probably said that already, because it just makes things easier than having to get behind it with a nut. Not that, that, that you know that's that complicated, but hey, I'm all for easy every chance we get. I put the back one on over here, just finger tight, because we're going to want to slide it around a little. A little tricky to get this thing. There we go. All right. Just got to keep wiggling around if it won't go at first. And make sure we're loose on the top ones. Put that maybe a little bit too finger tight. My fingers tighten too hard. All right. So now what we're going to do is we could just leave this where it is and have no issues. But if we're pushing this further out because we got somebody with long legs and needs their pedal tray to be pushed out this far. You can see that kind of creates an issue where now we've got this top turvy thing going on because we've got this pressure on the top. So they put in this solution where you take these long bolts. I'm going to take this one here. And this bolt, I'm going to show you here, I've already run a nut up on it. See that? It's going to capture one side of this plate flange. Then we have another nut that we're going to put on the bottom. You see how that works pretty easily here. And all you do is as put it, get it to wherever that angle is that you want it to be at. And I'm just going to use the front one just for convenience of demonstration. And as I put this bolt through this flange, coming in with the nut, with the nut flange, that round washer part pointing up towards the head of the bolt. So we just go ahead and run that up there. Oh, give me some, I need a little more room. I don't have the bolt in yet, so. All right, I need some room for that. Getting too enthusiastic too quick there, Barry. All right, so now I'm just putting this bolt into these pressed in inserts that are made for this, obviously. And now, once I have it in to where I think I, it's going to support it enough, then I can take this nut on the top and run it down so it's even with the flange on our plate here, our tray. Now I'll take the bottom one and run it up there. And once you tighten those two together, now we've got this cool support for the very front of it. See, now it won't tip anymore. And yeah, even though everything's tightened up, it probably won't tip that much. But again, this is a, a nice thought that they put into this rig to put this extra mount up here so we don't have any kind of a, a in other words, we're taking a lot of the stress away from pushing down on this. If somebody with long legs is in here and needs the pedals pushed back as far as they can get them. So yeah, very cool little design there, I think. And I think it'll work out really well yeah, once it's all tightened down correctly. So, yeah, that's about all there is to it. We would put this one on the other side if we were going to use it. I'm not going to use it again because it's going to be a flat deal when I'm finished with it. The plate's going to be flat. So, we'll take that back out later. What we'll get to next is, yeah, let's do the wheelbase assembly. That's the pieces that slide down into this A-frame. And then, of course, the deck itself that holds our motor base. And see what that looks like. All right, so now we've got the parts that are going to make up the wheel deck. And first we'll look at the wheel deck itself. This is one of, it's a heavy piece of steel again. This is the three mil steel that they're using here. And again, this looks like it's been put in a, a break and bent to the shape they need, at least for the most part. And then they weld it where they needed to reinforce it. And here we have a weld here. You guys can see that. Get a focus there. Focus, focus. Trying to get this thing to focus. Sometimes it doesn't want to. Anyway, there's the weld there. We've got a couple of welds up front here. Right there. Joining this is probably because of the angle they put on this. And again, we've got a weld on each corner over here and back here. Very solid piece. And you can see it has a multitude <laughs> of holes. So yeah, this is for... Fanatic for Thrustmaster, for Logitech, uh, maybe the AccuForce, maybe that one too. And I'm not sure about OSW mount. I'm going to have to put a bracket on one of my OSW motors, the midge motors, and then set it up here to see if it fits. If it doesn't, I'll just drill some holes because we are going to run an OSW system on this because I want to test it and see if it can handle that torque. I got a feeling it will because of the way it's made. And again, like we saw on that pedal base, Instead of just having slots here, we have individually drilled holes, which are going to be very, very nice to have and are going to really help any movement in this system when we're using a, 
heavier torque type of a motor like these midges. And yeah, again, another answer to my pet peeves. <laughs> One of my pet peeves about just cutting a slot in there instead of the individual holes. Again though, seven millimeter centers on these holes. So there is gonna be some micro adjustment on the angle lost because of this. But I would rather have this any day than something that when I really put pressure on it is gonna slip on me. Yeah, so very, very nicely done here. Right, and when we attach this to these posts here, we'll take a look at one of these posts. They're both the same. And here we have, this is a, a kind of a strange thing. Not strange, but it's just the way they did it. It's, they know where the stress points are on this particular tube here. And you can see here, this is like two millimeter steel. You can see the difference there in the light. In this top piece where the holes have been drilled and threads tapped in these holes is actually a three mil piece because that's where it really needs to hold, obviously. And it wraps all the way around the top part here. You can see it wrapping around there. And of course it's welded to the other pieces. And we're gonna be mounting this to the wheel deck and it's a very simple thing. It's going to be, let's see, it points, let's see, that's the front, it goes like this. So we'll have two bolts that go inside of there. And these are gonna be 60 mil bolts, the M8 60 millimeters. And yeah, we'll have two of those on each side. And this just slides down into the A-frame that we saw before. It's like I'm about to slide something off there. Slides down into those A-frames in the chassis. And then we're gonna use two M8 15 millimeter bolts to adjust the height. And there's a lot of holes in here. I like that too. So there's a lot of height adjustment in here. I think that it should satisfy just about anybody's needs. But once we get it in, we'll be able to see once we have it in there and all together. So that's what we'll do next. We'll go ahead and install this and see how it looks. All right, so we've got our two tubes installed in our A-frames. Easy enough to the put these, actually just screwing in your 15 millimeter, or 15 millimeter long M8 screws on each side. And I've got it kind of high because I don't know where it's gonna end up because I have that, the V3 motion module on here. So I imagine it's gonna kick it up a little higher than normal. But on the side here, very simple, putting those 60 millimeter long M8 screws in. And I have it kind of flat right now. Of course, everything's loose, so it's moving around. So I have it on, kind of on a flat setting right now. So I don't know what I'm gonna need but once I get the OSW motor mounted, the midge motor sitting on here, then I'll obviously have a better idea what angle I want it at. So yeah, another easy piece to put on, and like everything else that we've seen so far, yeah, just a few bolts and you're good to go. So what we're gonna do next is actually get to the seat. We'll take a look at the seat, and then we'll mount the seat onto our next level racing V3 motion platform bracket and see how that goes. All right, so here's the seat. Let me get down here with you. And first off, I have to say, it feels like a pretty comfortable seat. I've actually kind of sat on it on the ground, and it's got some very deep side bolstering on this seat. It reminds me of my old uh, 2001, I think it was, S2000, Honda S2000 seats, because they had this really nice bolstering in it. So really, yeah, and it feels like, obviously this is not a leather seat, but it's got a, a high quality look and feel to it. I've had some seats in here that before in the SRG. I tell you what, as soon as you took them out of the box, they, they, they felt like you know, they were going to fall apart on you, but not this. This is actually feels pretty substantial. And we've got some nice stitching up here, next level racing, and the same thing on the back. Of course, this is for the GT track. You can see it there, GT track. And yeah, everything seems to be done well here. This is a reclining seat, and we'll see how that works once we have it solidly mounted to our V3 motion platform. The only drawback on this kind of seat with the reclining, first of all, it's nice because you can find a really comfortable position quickly and you don't have to worry about taking bolts in and out in your side mount seat brackets and changing things around and then having to get it back out and do it all over again. But if you're a heavyweight person or a big person and you have a very heavy brake pedal, a hard brake pedal that you push trying to replicate some real race car forces, then this can wear on the ratchet mechanism in here on the gears and the teeth and eventually you can actually strip past them. So that's a concern for something like this, but I imagine you'd have to have a pretty hard brake pedal and it would take a while for it to happen, especially if you're not reclining it too far back. If you have, you know, the further you recline this thing back, see if it'll go back. Oh, no, it won't, the spring's too tight. 
If you have it too far back, that puts more stress on it. So the further upright you can run it, the better off it's going to be. Right. So let's go ahead and get down to the bottom of this. And first off, you can see we have a seat slider already on here. And we have the seat bracket already attached to the bottom. And I don't know how good the slider is yet. And we won't know until we actually have it mounted and we're using it as far as back and forth play. But I can grab it right here. And I'm trying to move it back and forth. And I don't feel anything. But again, we really have to wait to give it a proper test when it's mounted. Now, there's two ways to mount this seat. I'm going to be using these holes right here, these threaded inserts, because it's going to mount directly on top of the next level racing motion module, the V3. Now, if I didn't, I wasn't going to use that, then what I would do is you can come up to my side here, and you can see there's these little flanges here, and then there's the threaded insert. Well, the flanges allow you just to set the seat down on top of the back of the chassis frame, and they'll match right up with that. And then we'll run a 60 mil M8 bolt right into these holes on each side. And that's how you affix the seat to the chassis if you don't have a module, uh, rather a V3 motion module, which we do. So we'll be using these guys. So, yeah, that's really all I can really talk about the seat at this moment. Uh, once we have it mounted and we're using it, then we can talk a little bit more about how it feels, the stability of it, how these seat rails feel, how solid they are as far as pushing back and forth on them. So, yeah. What we'll do next is, uh, it really, I'm just, it's, you're not going to be able to see me mounting this because you really can't see much because I'm going to have to come up from the underneath the seat mounting platform on the, the V3 motion module. So there's really nothing to see. So when we come back, you'll just see it mounted. So we'll get to that next. The seat is mounted, and I've actually tightened up a lot of the frame here. And right away, I can feel that there's a little bit of flex here but it's not so much the seat it's actually down here in the platform the motion platform where there you know there's a universal joint under here so typically of a motion platform you're going to have well some motion <laughs> when you are moving around in the seat it's not like you're sitting in a, a bucket seat like in my p1 rig over there that's solidly mounted to the rig but let's go ahead and get in here see what it feels like <clears throat> well, that pedal tray is going to have to come back. It's a little bit too far forward. And I knew that, though, but I was demonstrating that bolt that keeps it from flexing forward when you have it that far. The deck, I went ahead and tightened this stuff down up here. And I can say it is tough. <laughs> this is a solid mount here. And I, I kind of thought it would be. But, yeah, I'm real pleased with this. Now, there might be a little bit... I don't... Maybe, maybe you can see it on the video, <clears throat> but I think I feel a little bit of lateral, just barely though. And really that's not too much of a concern when you have your motor mounted here and you're steering. Yeah, you're not really pushing this way or that way. So, but then again, we won't know for sure until I get that heavy small midge on here and the bracket and see how it behaves under those conditions. And yeah, we still have to mount a bar here that will, I'll show you how that goes on on the side of the seat here that's going to accommodate our shifter mechanism. But other than that, and this, this reclines, of course. Let's see. Maybe. Yeah. I miss the reclining seat, actually. It's kind of nice to lay back. If you're on uh, an endurance race, racing your GT car, and you're waiting for your turn, or you just got finished with your stint, you can actually fall asleep in here, I imagine, pretty easily. The bolsters on the side feel really good. Not that we... And actually, once I get the seat and everything going and we're actually driving, then these bolsters are really going to come in handy when this seat mover, that V3 motion platform, is rolling me from left to right. It's really, it adds to the immersion when your body kind of goes against these bolsters. Good room for shifting. Doesn't really catch your arm here. And again, I'm, a, I'm five foot eight, 150 pounds or so, so you have to keep that in mind when you're seeing me sitting in this rig. But so far, preliminary results are very, very good. This is going to, this really feels solid as far as the rig itself. And yeah, so what we'll do next is get to the shifting mechanism and how we're going to mount that. Let's take a look at the harness that comes with the GT Track cockpit kit. Now, this is a two inch weave or belt web, as they call it, web belt, belt web. Anyway. Two inch, and it is the real deal. Same thing you will find in a real car. 
It's very nice. And actually, the hardware's done really nice, too. It's all black, powder-coated, all the hardware bits on it. And it has a seat belt, kind of a, it was just, I'm kind of surprised, but anyway, it has the seat belt release on it that you just press the button just like you would in your car, and it comes open, which makes it simpler to get in and out of, that's for sure. And it's got this yellow webbing that's really soft feeling. The nylon they make this out is really soft. So this goes obviously against your body instead of the buckle, which is gonna make things a bit more comfortable. Now, we're gonna attach this to the seat. And normally, to be honest, uh, you know, if I was j just had the cockpit in a static configuration and we didn't have the V3 motion module on here, I would probably not even install this because when you're sitting in a static rig, yeah, it can add a little bit of immersion, but really it adds he heat, I think, more than immersion because once you tighten the belt down and you're driving, it creates hot spots. And it does that anyway it, if you're in a, a regular motion simulator or if you're in a static type of rig. So it, it generates more heat, I think, than really brings the immersion. But, you know, everybody's different. Everybody has their own thing. So, yeah, you might want to mount this and try it, obviously, to see, you know, if you like it or not on your GT track rig. But we're going to mount it because I have the, the motion rig on there, or the motion module. And obviously, as I'm moving back and forth in the braking acceleration, this belt is going to add a bit more immersion as I, my body falls against it when I'm braking. So we'll see what I think about the effect of that once we're in the cockpit and driving. So what we'll do now is go on. It's a very simple matter of attaching this. We'll go over to the rig here and get this thing mounted up. We've got the harness attached now. And yeah, it's a pretty simple affair here. And I'm going to go down here and show you the different options you have. First off, you can mount this harness in. You can see I have it in the back one. And the instructions actually call for putting it in one of the holes up here, or this hole even, at the end of the seat thing. But that wouldn't really work because the angle would be wrong, I think. You want the angle to be coming from this way, then obviously coming from this way back towards you probably wouldn't work as well because it'd be you're constantly trying to pull away from your waist. But anyway, you can, you can test it and try different ways. Now, if the module was not in here, then obviously we would be mounting it somewhere in one of these holes because there would be nothing in these holes because the module's not there, right? So we just use a regular 60 millimeter bolt and bolt it together. Now we'll go ahead and cruise around the back here. And here you can see that there's actually some threaded inserts in here, and we just put those on, right? Easy enough, but there's also, I think enough room here, if you look down here, there's a nice plain piece here that we can actually drill some holes in it and attach, because we have this motion simulator or the motion module in here, we drill a couple of holes in here. We could attach a piece of L bracket aluminum and then put in a spring tensioner in like you see here. This is what I had mounted on my Sim Experience Stage 4 rig and it worked pretty well. So yeah, we could easily put one of these on. In fact, I'm probably gonna make one of those again and put that on. Maybe I'll do a video on it. But anyway, so yeah, easy enough to mount these on those back holes here. We'll come around and you can see again, that I have it mounted. Now this, we had to kind of snake this one in because we have this shifter bar mount in the way. But you'll see it in there. It's just another hole in the side. We'll go down to the bottom here. You can see it there. Right, simple enough. And again, on a static rig, this will not have the same impact as it will with this motion module. Right, so let's get back. I think we'll go to the shifter, getting that segment installed or unit installed next. All right, so now we're going to talk about the shifter assembly, and actually this is probably the more complex one <laughs> of any of the assembly that we've done so far. This is the tube that's going to go on the side of the seat mount, and we have a couple of holes here, one here and one here that we're going to mount it on. I mentioned that before during the video, but you may have missed it, but I'm going to show you me actually bolting it on there. You can either bolt this on the seat side, or you can bolt it on the actual chassis side, and we're going to do it on the seat because we have the next level racing V3 motion module mounted and that makes the seat sit higher so this will actually mount to the seat bracket itself. They made a facility for that. Pretty neat. And what happens is, and this is just a, a again the square tubes, nothing really to see here, but this is an offset mechanism here, a little assembly. It's pretty cool and you can see it's got some nice welds there all the way around and it kind of goes off to the side and this is actually welded on here too, here. Very substantial piece, just like everything else in this cockpit kit. 
And this will be mounted to the right side of the seat because we're in North America and we drive on the right side of the road. <laughs> and this is going to sit up here. The three holes obviously are going to match a three hole pattern here, which, whichever one we choose by sliding it back and forth. And once we have that bolted in, that's really the, the main shifter assembly. The rest of it is going to be facilitating what we're going to be using as far as a shifter, a handbrake, shifter and a handbrake. Depends on what you want to use. And I've been playing with this, so I had it together already. Here's the main shifter assembly. And it has the three holes, too, that are obviously going to fit like, a, like this, right? So this will bolt onto that. And then you can bolt things to this because obviously there's a lot of holes in it. But, and again, this is a three mil steel on here. Again, very substantial built here, all this stuff is. So once this is mounted on here, we can just leave it like that and mount whatever we want to to it. Or we can actually go with this optional bracket. Not optional, they call it a handbrake bracket. Because I guess some handbrakes need a wider stance to mount to. But it's kind of neat the way they did this. They have these, they drill some holes and put some threads in them obviously, tap some threads in, and they put, using some set screws, see them? You can see the holes in the middle of them, they're hollow, and that's so you can put an Allen wrench in there and hold it while you tighten this nut down, and that'll make it a nice tight assembly. But that allows you to have a nice flush surface, a flat surface here, so it's, you know, these things, the, the set screws are actually flush with the surface. And that way you can mount whatever you want and not worry about it hitting a nut or a bolt or something like that or sticking out. And that's pretty cool that they actually did that. There's only one way, though, that this will fit on this shifter bracket. And you can see these little L patterns here. It actually fits in there. So I'm going to set it in there. And see, these nuts also are acting as spacers. So they're kind of a dual purpose thing. See the space we have there? See it going through there? Over here. <laughs> anyway, so that means we can actually get a bolt up from the bottom sticking out. So we can bolt something down. Um, you can bolt your shifter, your handbrake, if they have the facility for that. Or you can even bolt some aluminum profile on here and then do whatever you want to, go crazy, right? The beauty of aluminum profile. So that gives you room for like those little button head screws, or they call them pan heads. So they won't interfere. In other words, they won't interfere with what's going on because they got enough space in there to fit. So you can get everything tightened down nice and tight. It comes with extra bolts, obvious, or rather nuts, not bolts, very. I'm going to put a couple on here just so you can see what that does. They actually screw down on these set screws just like the other bolts do. Or rather, nuts. God, I'm stuck on bolts. The nuts in here acting as spacers, but we got, in, and also tightening these set screws. But we also have bolts here that are actually going to keep every, this mounted tightly to the shifter mount, right? <laughs> Not that complex. And again, we can al always do something different if we want to. I don't know what I'm going to be mounting this, so this is kind of. You know, I'm kind of open to what I'm going to do with this yet. I'm just not sure. That'll be in the setup portion of the video because, you know, we always do a setup after we do a build video on these cockpits. And that's about it. Actually, the, the main thing that we're going to get mounted now is going to be this to the seat and then this to that. And then we can go from there to decide what we're going to do as far as handbrakes or shifters or whatever else we want to put over there. Uh, coffee makers, whatever, right? <laughs> All right, so when we come back, we'll actually be putting this onto the seat assembly. Now we can do our last bit as far as when it comes to the build of this cockpit, and that is the obviously the shifter we just talked about. And I just want to show you something real quick why this bar has to be used on this rig, because we're using the V3 motion module, and that actually lifts the seat up quite a bit. This would actually, if you see this flange here, would be sitting right on the top of this if we did not have this in there. So that gives you a general idea of the difference of the height. And that's something to think about if you're going to be putting motion on a GT track cockpit because you want to make sure that your wheel is going to be where it needs to be. And of course, your monitors are going to be higher because everything else is going to be higher, obviously. Anyway, so we're going to attach this on here so that this will go on it and be high enough for us. Typically, it would be right here if you did not have the motion module. So you can see how much lower that is. Now, easy enough, all we have to do is, remember this is actually has some threaded inserts in it, so we don't have to worry about putting a nut on the other side, so this one's an easy one to do. We just need the 60 millimeter long M8 bolt, and yeah, good to go. So let's go ahead and put that on. 
These should go in pretty easy. Of course, I should be careful when I say stuff like that. <laughs> Lots of times when I say something like that, it doesn't go in very easily. There we go. But in this case, it looks like it went in okay. All right, I'm gonna leave this loose, not tighten it up yet. So now we'll put in this bar here. I'm not sure where, well, I think I'm just gonna put it on the front first because typically I like my shifters more forward than back. So I'm just gonna go ahead and leave it there. And if I need to change it, it's easy enough to change. Now, the bolts, for the first time we're gonna be using these little washers that have the teeth on them. Spiked washers, I think they called them. And it's kind of a locking washer. Once you compress those teeth, they put pressure backwards on the bolt and the nut holding it to try to keep it from vibrating out. That's the theory anyway. So I'm just gonna go ahead and slab these in first. We need three, obviously. And sometimes it helps to get on top and look down. Oops, <laughs> move my rig around here, these wheels and make sure that the bolt is parallel going in the holes because they can get a little little off angle on you going through this tube here, make it a little difficult. Then we'll just go ahead and get our bolts on. And I'm, it's kind of a tight squeeze for me to get the bolts on because of the angle I'm doing here to make sure you guys can see what's going on. Normally I'd just jump around the other side and make it easy. Right, so once we have these on, and we'll just leave them finger tight, We'll put the shifter mount on. And I remember I already showed you this in the other segment, and it has three holes, obviously, to mount to the top of this. So we'll go ahead and just set that up here. And I'm going to kind of lean down and see where it's going, make sure my holes get matched up. And let's see if we can get the bolts through here. And looking now, there we go. Yeah, this is all pretty easy. I'll tell you, this is one of the easiest rigs I've put together. I think this could be done in record time once you've done one. Because I'm gonna, usually my rigs, I have, you know, I'll do one and I'll have to take it back apart and store it till I need it again, unless I'm using it at the time. And it's nice to be able to be able to rather disassemble it quickly. And this facilitates itself quite well to that, I think. Not only that, but you could actually do this modularly. These wheels down here, you could actually split this in half, I think and I haven't done it yet, and just use both halves. You can push them around individually and store them next to each other or something. So yeah, it's, it's a great rig as far as storage goes. Right, so we got this on now. Of course, it's finger tight. When it's tight, it will be all the way up flat like this. And we're gonna be putting our, what did I do with that? I thought I had that over here. Putting in the handbrake, little deck on here, as we saw before, right? And that's just gonna sit on top of here in those little L holes that we saw before in the previous segment and it'll sit like that. I really like that you put this on here. I'm not sure if it's drilled for particular handbrakes, maybe like a Husingveld or something or shifters, but the key thing here is like I said before, we can actually just put a piece of profile on both sides of this and secure it from underneath with some button head screws. And then we got some profile. Once we have aluminum profile up here, you know, the sky's pretty much the limit what you can build on top of this as long as, you know, it's not too heavy and this will hold it. But once all this is bolted together, I imagine it's going to be pretty stiff. But again, when we get to the setup portion of this video, which will be part two, then we'll take a look at the setup and how it does when we're actually driving with it. So yeah, I think what we'll do now is, yeah, we're done with the build, so we'll just get to the final thoughts. Final thoughts on the build portion of the Next Level Racing GT Track Cockpit. This video is part one of a two-part series I'll be doing for this review. This is called The Build. Part two of the series will be called The Setup, so be sure to check that out after you've seen this one. Now, I've had a very easy time with this build. The fact that I didn't have to drill out any holes to make things fit is a testament to the build quality that goes into this cockpit. All the hardware needed was in the kit, so no last minute runs to the hardware store. The packaging of the parts in this kit are some of the best I've seen, with every single part sporting its own bubble wrap sleeve. <laughs> I could find no scratches on any parts when removing them from their covers. I like the way the guys at Next Level Racing were thinking when they were in the designing stages of this cockpit. 
including things like casters along with the standard feet that many prefab cockpits come with. Drilling and threading holes for the wheelbase mounts supporting the tubes instead of the usual more common clamping screw style of fixing these tubes, which makes it more stiff. And drilling a radius sequence of holes for angle adjustments on both the wheel and pedal plates, which provides, again, a stiffer mounting solution for both. The steel and bolt hardware seemed to be of high quality. Mounting the next level racing V3 motion platform was a simple affair. Of course, I would not expect anything less, considering that these units have the same source manufacturer. Adding motion platform does raise the seat another six inches when compared to mounting the seat without it, and may require some modding to get everything dialed in to your own personal preferences. And of course, that's true for any cockpit, I think. Speaking of the seat, I have to admit, it's quite comfortable and it's nice to be able to adjust the recline angle without having to unbolt the seat from the side mounting brackets that are used on most real racing seats out there. But for me personally, the recline feature rather of this seat introduces too much flex. And that is true with any seat with an adjustable incline on the seat back. Some have more flex than others, but I would prefer to have a fixed back seat on this cockpit, especially when running any kind of motion feature on it. The included harness is a nice add-on but the effect of the harness is really best felt when used together with some kind of motion feature. Overall, this cockpit seems to be quite stiff once built and all the fasteners have their final torque applied, but I won't know for sure until we have it set up with a wheelbase, pedal set, and shifter, which I will be doing in the second part of this review called The Setup. That video will be released along with this one, so it should be easy for you to find it on my channel. I'm Barry Rowland. Thanks again for watching the Sim Racing Garage channel. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button. And if you would like to support what I do here at the SRG, visit my website at simracinggarage.com.